So let me just start off by saying um, how excited we are to have so many businesses interested in exporting opportunities. Um, I'm Sarah Mata. I'm with the Idaho State Department of Agriculture on the international team as a trade specialist. And I am Sharon Adams. I'm with the Idaho Department of Commerce on the international team. Our main focus is to work with small to medium sized companies that are new to export or trying to expand their export markets. I also want to induce, introduce Andrea, who's part of our team. She's going to be handling the technical issues in the background. She let everybody into the meeting. Um, so if there's a lot of background noise, she might mute you. She's also going to uh, monitor the questions. So feel free to ask them, even if Sarah or I are in the middle of something. Um, Andrea is going to take care of those while we're doing the presentation. So our goal in this session is to help you discover if exporting is right for you, and if so, are you ready to export? We'll also help you create an export plan to give you the greater odds of success, take your elevator speech to the next level, and give you some tools to help determine if direct or indirect sales are the best fit for the market. Exporting is not just for large firms. Large firms do account for the greatest dollar volume, but small to medium companies account for the largest number of exporters. Developing an export market does require time, effort, and dedication of personnel and financial resources. The process of breaking into a new domestic market and new global market are very similar. However, greater patience, commitment will be required as you will be dealing with markets halfway, half a world away with different languages, cultures, and guidelines. So here we're going to go into the readiness assessment that hopefully everybody got in their email. And if not, the rest of you can just follow along. Um, like I said, these will all be in slides later. So the first question we had was, do you have a product that is already being successfully sold domestically? Um, sales in domestic markets are good indicators of potential success abroad. If you don't have a product or service that is proven locally, you might benefit more from concentrating on domestic sales before pursuing international ones. Question 2 is your company's management committed to developing export markets. Management commitment is the most important factor for success. It really takes having everyone on board to develop an export market. Number three, do you have an international marketing plan, marketing plan with defined goals and strategies? A defined marketing plan will allow you to find and focus on the best opportunities. Without an export plan, better opportunities are often overlooked or missed. Question four, does your, do, you have, do you have sufficient production capacity to meet the market demands? You may need more space and resources, such as equipment and personnel for manufacturing. It may also require specific product adjustments to meet those market regulations. And number five, does your company have adequate resources to support an increase in sales? Finances can be an obstacle for many companies. You want to make sure you can afford new activities like international travel, trade missions, trade shows, market research. There's programs that can help provide financial assistance to exporters. One of these programs is the STEP program or the State Trade Expansion Program. I've included the link in this presentation. We'll also be covering that and other resources later in trainings. Um, this first training is really a basic overview, trying to help you decide if you are ready to export, if it's right for you, and give you some overviews of things. So there will be lots of links to go back and um, that you can look at after we send this out. So question six, do you have both US and foreign intellectual property protection for your product? You should know that protecting your intellectual property here domestically does not extend your protection internationally. Companies should conduct due diligence first before exporting into certain more restrictive markets. Will your company be able to modify your product's packaging and content if needed for foreign import regulations? You may need to modify your product or service, not only for regulatory requirements, but for buyer preference in foreign markets. You want to know who you're selling to, what they like, what they don't like. Certain countries have colors that are good and bad, have different meanings. Um, so do your research. Question eight, do you have knowledge about shipping your product overseas? 
You need to be aware of packing, labeling, documentation, insurance requirements. Also familiarize yourself with the different methods of shipping, import rules, and regulations. Do you have experience or knowledge of export payment methods or letters of credit? You'll want to evaluate new customers and extend credit cautiously. Checking a buyer's credit or their international company profile is a great place to start. Our partners at the US Commercial Service are a great resource to evaluate a potential buyer. Question 10, do you have knowledge and an understanding of US export controls and compliance requirements? So things such as, does your product need a license? Usually the answer is no, 95% of exports do not, and the few that do can be found on this link. So overall, this assessment should help you identify some of the things that you need to consider to decide if you wanna proceed down the road to exporting. We'll go into more detail on most of these topics in later sessions. Out of curiosity, We'll go ahead and ask, did anybody who did this worksheet have the answer yes to all of these? Or did anybody answer no to all of them? No, nobody sharing. Okay, <laughs> we'll keep going then. And you can also put your answers to their questions in the chat too, if you need, or if it's easier to monitor that way for those attending. Thanks, Jaya. So we'll start with creating an export plan. Small businesses need an export plan with clear goals, strategies, and target markets. An export plan will help you assemble facts, goals, and create an action statement. A solid plan should include objectives, time schedules, and mark milestones so that your success can be measured and it can help motivate personnel. The export plan questionnaire was also in your materials that we had mailed out. So I just wanna briefly go through these questions. Uh, what products are you selecting to export? Are there any modifications needed? What country or countries are you targeting? Is an export license needed? What are the customer profiles? How will you reach those customers? Are there challenges in that market? Cultural differences or import controls? How will you address those? How will you determine your product sales price? What operational steps must be taken and when? What time frame for each element of the plan? What personnel and resources will be de dedicated to exporting? What will be the cost and time needed for each element? And how will results be evaluated and used to modify the plan? This slide has a few additional questions to consider. As you begin to build your export plan, start by using your worksheet and ask yourself questions such as, are my products ready for export? Do they meet the labeling requirements for the country or the countries that you're interested in? Do you need a license for them? What challenges will you face in each market, as such as competition, cultural differences, and how will you address those? Having a good plan in place is the first step to success. Evaluate what resources that you have now and what resources you will need to obtain to begin exporting. It's also a good idea to look into export resources that are available to help you succeed through state and local agencies. Here is a sample of an export plan outline that you can use as you work through developing your export strategy. And again, all of these will be included in the PowerPoint that we follow up. So because export plans are so unique to every company, we don't have a sample of this certain company. Ag, commerce are completely different. So the templates that we're giving you are basically trying to help you figure out what you need to be researching what you need to find out. What are the things that you need to think about before you just dive into exporting? So, now that you have even more to think about with creating your export plan, let's get to the fun part, the elevator pitch. The purpose of an elevator pitch is to get your message across clearly. You want to try not to use buzzwords um, that don't really add any value to your message. Your elevator pitch should show customers how your products and services are unique 
and superior to the competitors. What makes a good value proposition? Clarity, it's easy to understand, and it does say what the customer will be getting by purchasing your products. It should be clear how different or better your product or service is. It should be engaging and short. You don't want your elevator pitch to bore someone. Avoid hype like never seen before or amazing miracle product. And the last key to a great elevator pitch is structure. Who are you? What do you do? Who do you do it for? And what is your value proposition? So we have an example here of a not so great pitch, but before I do that, did anybody complete their elevator pitch and want to share? Before I scare you by pointing out some things you shouldn't do. All right, no takers yet. So we'll just read this one here. For the brilliant minds that never rest, who need a way to record their thoughts at all times, we provide a pen and tablet that writes in water for the use in a shower or bath that allows the users to record their amazing thoughts at all times, no matter where they are, even in the rain or underwater. Compared to a normal pen and pencil and paper, they can't do either one of those things well or at all. Our product not only writes, but will not smudge or smear, unlike those other guys. So to quickly highlight a few of the areas that you would not want to use, the green highlights have the buzzwords, brilliant, amazing, normal. You wanna avoid those if possible. Repeating the same element too many times, water, shower, bath, underwater, rain, Combine those all into one thought. Those are highlighted in yellow. And then the description of the um, other guys, not a good description. You want to know who your competition is. That's gonna be one of the things that you actually do in your export plan is to know who your competition is. So after we work in the elevator pitch, it looks like this. My name is Bob Smith, the inventor of AquaDoc. We've developed a pen and tablet that works when wet. Ideal for a person whose mind is never at rest or an enthusiastic sports fan. The AquaDoc allows you to record your thoughts in the shower, pool, or during a sudden rainstorm at a baseball game. We've been endorsed by the Little League for the last five years, and unlike the Champ Pro Baseball scorebook or just a five-star spiral notebook, the stats and scores of our favorite team will not smudge or smear. So here you're actually calling out the name of your product AquaDoc, you're describing all of the wet options combined together. You're naming the competition, Champro Baseball Scorebook, Five Star Spiral Notebook, and you're stating why it is better and having data to back it up, referring to the endorsement of um, the Little League. So that's a much better example of what kind of uh, elevator pitch you should you should put out there. And I did have another template that we have that I really like this one too. Um, it includes an action to wrap things up. So sometimes when you're giving your elevator pitch, you can kind of feel like you're talking at somebody instead of to them or with them, you're just spilling this out. But by ending it with giving them a business card, asking them to connect on LinkedIn, asking if there's anything else you can do for them, it kind of, brings it all back around, makes it to a finish. Play around with your words, say it to yourself, practice your speech with your dog, however you wanna do it, but you just wanna keep practicing it and practicing. Oh, Sarah, you're muted. Just saw that. <laughs> Last up, we'll talk about direct or indirect sales and which one is right for you. The main difference between direct and indirect exporting is that in direct exporting, the manufacturer performs the export tasks rather than delling it to others. The tasks of market contacts, market research, physical distribution, export documentation, pricing, et cetera, all fall on the manufacturer. Indirect exporting uses a third party to handle the heavy lifting and is more of a hands-off approach. 
When looking at indirect exporting, some of the pros can be that it requires the least amount of resources and research. It can be less risky because a lot of the risk falls on the middleman. It can be useful for companies who are not ready to fully commit to international marketing. Some of the cons are that it can increase the total cost of the sale due to the cost of adding a middleman in there. You'll have less control over the export process. And in the end, the company learns very little about exporting or about foreign markets. Indirect exporting is typically best suited for smaller companies with limited resources, companies who want to sell in foreign markets, but don't want to do the heavy lifting or deal with the hassle of exporting. And with direct exporting, some of the pros are that it has reduced expenses and you have the ability to maximize your profit margin. You'll have the ability to learn more about market feedback from your customers in those markets. You'll also have more control over the export process and the ability to establish those relationships in those markets overseas. Some of the cons are that it requires more upfront research and the commitment of resources to build the relationships in foreign markets. There are also difficulties of breaking into new markets, more complexities and risks. Direct exporting is best suited for companies that have the time and the resources to commit to learning foreign markets and entry strategies, companies who wanna have a hands-on experience with exporting and more control over the process, who are really ready to uh, commit to international marketing. So at this time we'll pause and ask if there's any questions. We're good as far as in the chat at this moment. So this is Debbie Winkler. I have a question and you you guys may address this later, even in another session. But um, I'm, I'm wondering if you can comment at this point on how you guys assist with the research end of this. Let's say that I'm working with a business that um, decides they want to go at this from more of a direct perspective. They want to begin researching and do things across these various areas that you guys talk about in the export plan. Do you support um, and assist with research? Sharon, do you want to that or? Um, sure. We have several different ways that we do um, help. The U.S. Commercial Services um, can help vet companies. Um, they have market research available. We also have trade managers in Mexico um, China and Taiwan. Um, the US commercial service has their agents in multiple parts of the world. Some programs you have to pay for some things. Um, some really overviews of different products or companies um, sometimes are free services, but we will go into those more as far as what resources we have, what the costs are. Um, links to all of the different areas that you can look at to do these, do the research for it. Okay, that's good. That's a good start. Thanks. Yeah, and like Sharon, with the for the for us at the Department of Ag, we do very similar. We can do market research for you. We share those trade office managers with Commerce, the ones in um, Taiwan and Mexico, I'm in China. So we have access to you know kind of on the ground information there as far as the market. And um, we also have access to a lot of databases that um, the public doesn't. So we can really help you um, discover which markets are best for you and what, what you need to do. So we're there to help you know, along the way as you go. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Anyone else? All right, you guys are making this too easy, but we really will include uh, a lot of information over the four presentations and links to everything. So, in our next session, we're going to cover the identifying target markets in more detail, explain how to find the buyers and distributors, determine what licensing is required, access multiple sources of export assistance. Um, so, there's going to be a lot of information going forward. In session three, we're going to help determine your product classification or at least know where to go to find all that information. Know what export documentation you might need for what country or product you're exporting. Um, what are your logistics options? Uh, there are companies that will, you can hand them your product and they will handle it from packaging to getting there to customs clearance. Or 
you can handle all of that yourself. So there, you, you have one extreme to the other and they're all available for people. Um, we'll also go over inco terms, tariffs, and free trade agreements. And then in session four, we're going to learn benefits of export compliance, export financing and banking, navigating international laws and regulations. So that is all we have today, everyone. I want to thank you again for joining us and Sarah for taking these trainings with me, as well as those who help in the background. So, so yeah, this is. Hey, Sharon, before you hang up, this is Laura. If you went back to that previous slide, we just want everybody to know that session four, that's a new date. It's been postponed a week. So um, just take note that that's, it's now on January 27th. Perfect. Thanks, Laura. I think we only had four people at the time before we got it changed that had signed up for the fourth session already. So um, yeah, we'll make sure everybody knows it originally was for the 20th, but now it's the 27th in case you kind of had that penciled in on your calendar. Uh, change it to the 27th. You won't want to miss that session either. And Sharon, we did have uh, some questions come in. Is there anybody or can um, one of you guys share some success, some company success stories? I know, put everybody on the spot. I know we have a wide variety of export experience companies, and we'd love to hear feedback from you as well on maybe what has worked with what Sharon and, and Sarah discussed, and maybe what hasn't worked. So this, this is Laura, I'll with jump the... in. Oh, sorry. I was going to call on Carla so she can maybe be thinking while you speak. So, Carla, you guys at High Desert Milk have exported for quite some time. So, um, I think it's fantastic you're on these webinars to learn additional things to continue to improve your export performance. But if there's anything you could share from the private sector with this group, that'd be super helpful. So, back to you, Gary. Uh, we've been exporting for 25 years of night vision goggles all over the world. Um, we've had pretty good experience in regards to uh, our, our ITAR licensing and our BIS licensing for the EAR. Um, we have had instances where we've had some issues. Uh, one was sending a night vision goggle for training purposes down to Costa Rica where uh, we've had an issue with a freight forwarder actually trying to clear it incorrectly as an educational tool and uh, had to contact the uh, uh, U.S. Embassy down there and their Department of Commerce uh, in the U.S. Embassy who was able to help us direct us with uh, a freight forwarder that was more familiar with what we were trying to do and then we were able to clear it. But the whole process ended up taking about four months. but. Uh, we were actually able to get everything corrected and get it cleared in there so we can do the training. Uh, the company we were dealing with was a search and rescue company that was actually a trailblazer down in Costa Rica for using of night vision goggles for HEMS services. So it uh, was a, definitely a, an experience that we had to go through. Uh, I wish back then I would have been more aware of how Idaho Commerce could have helped us with those uh problems but uh, we were able to solve it ourselves but uh afterwards um i know that idaho commerce uh, they're a great resource if you guys need that assistance uh reach out to them they're always there to help they do have connections in these countries that can assist and make things easier for you perfect thanks for that what a confidence gary um and if everyone is wondering uh what all the acronyms are that gary just mentioned You'll need to stick around for the next sessions because we'll go over those. <laughs> Believe me, there's a lot of them out there. It's hard to keep track. Thank you, Gary. Mm -hmm. Carla, did you want to go?
So if you want to know the truth, I haven't been here for the last 15 minutes because I got, I've got equipment coming in and my plant manager was gone. So I got pulled out of the office. I don't even know what you're talking about. Oh, so, so there you go. <laughs> well, this is Laura and I would, what we were, uh, one of the questions uh, had come in about success stories. And so we were calling on companies that were on this uh, webinar um that have had some experience if you had anything you wanted to share and i had kind of pointed out that you guys have exported for a number of years now we certainly uh think it's fantastic you're on these programs to learn more to continue to enhance that so we were kind of putting you on the spot if you wanted to share any um successes or what has worked for you guys at high desert Mill. so i could um so we've had successes but you have to be really, I mean, we've, we've learned lessons too. And we do have an office in Mexico because we do export there so much. And we've, you, we've learned that one way or the other, and it's probably been said, you have to have boots on the ground somehow. Um, especially when prices are going up and um, they find a lot more things wrong with non-fat dry milk, you know? And you have to have somebody that can get there right then and to, to check out the claims. And most of them for us have turned out to be invalid. And but you just have to work through those those issues. Um, but we find that a lot more when prices are high than when they're low. That's one comment I would make with our market. Thank you. And Trish, yes, please go next. <laughs> okay, thanks. Hi, I'm Trish McCarthy. Um, I was just gonna share some observations on, on the discussion this morning, but since Tina challenged us to do an elevator pitch, I'll, I'll do that since it was assigned not to come off as a salesperson. Um, I'm with a company called Impello Global. So my name is Trish McCarthy. I'm an insurance agent with Impello Global, and we work with exporters to help them learn how to mitigate risk by picking the right payment terms and using credit insurance to help them mitigate their sales while they're expanding into new markets. We work with Exim Bank and private sector carriers like Kofos and Euler. So that's my pitch, evaluate it and give me feedback, please. But I also wanted to say, um, I'm new to Idaho in the last seven or eight months, and I've just been getting plugged into the programs that um, Idaho Commerce provides. And I come from Ohio, so I'm used to having all these kinds of conversations with Ohio exporters. And I just wanna commend you for a very relaxed format, it's nice that you've put our audio and our videos on because we're all trying to get back to that feeling of meeting people around a conference room and actually networking and talking and learning. So maybe the neat thing about this being a four part series is we'll all get a little bit more comfortable each time. But I, I've always known from my original days as an international banker for many, many years and then in export credit insurance that people underutilize the services right down the street from their Department of Commerce. So um, hats off to you. I've seen it work for a lot of exporters in different states, and this is a good program. So it's nice to meet each of you. Great, thanks, Trish. Oh. Yeah, it has been great to meet you too. Um, I am gonna circle back to your elevator pitch though. You just need to add, why are you better? I know, I know why you're better because we work with you and love to work with you, but what sets you apart from the other, from your competition? So you said who you worked with, um, what you did, how it's great, but how does it, how are you set apart from somebody else? Why wouldn't you just use the other guy down the street? So that's the cool suggestion thank I have you. there. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Shall I answer now or work on that? <laughs> like you can just work on it. It's good. <laughs> All right, anyone else want to throw their elevator pitch out there? No, well, 
I guess we're going to wrap things up then everyone. Like I said, thanks again for coming. I'm uh, glad we had participation and like Trish said, hopefully everyone will get more comfortable with every session and we'll just continue to have more and more participation as we go. Yeah, thanks so much everybody.